Hi, I'm Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. In video H on the male reproductive system, we're finally going to take a look at how gametogenesis is regulated in the male. In both the male and the female, we'll talk about the so-called HPG axis, which stands for the hypothalamus, pituitary, more specifically the anterior pituitary, gonadal axis. Of course, this being the male, the gonads would be the testes. So literally, the hypothalamus produces a hormone that then controls the release of hormones from the anterior pituitary, and its hormones then control the release of hormones by the gonads and also control um, gametogenesis or spermatogenesis. Around puberty, a hormone produced by the hypothalamus called gonadotropin releasing hormone, gonadotropin releasing hormone, its levels begin to increase and that's going to then stimulate the anterior pituitary to secrete the so-called gonadotropins, which include luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Now these hormones sounds, sound like they're female hormones, but they are also occurring in the male. More than likely they were named first in the female and then it was realized that those hormones were the exact same hormones in the male. Before I continue, let's make sure that we know how to memorize all these hormone names. Remember that the hypothalamus controls the anterior pituitary always by means of releasing hormones or inhibiting hormones. So in this case, it is a releasing hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone. In turn, then, the anterior pituitary produces two types of hormones that are collectively referred to as the gonadotropins. If you listen to that word, it says gonads, tropin referring to hormones that are going to trigger the release of more hormones. So luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone are going to trigger the release of more hormones from the gonads. And of course, that's primarily going to be testosterone, uh, but we'll also see that antigen binding protein, but particularly inhibin, an inhibitory hormone, will play a role. In the male, we see that luteinizing hormone is produced uh, I'm sorry, is, is also going to have a synonym that uh, reflects the fact that luteinizing hormone stimulates the interstitial cells. So you'll see that this hormone, namely LH, in the male is also referred to as ICSH, which stands for interstitial cell stimulating hormone interstitial cell stimulating hormone. So those are synonyms in the male, LH and ICSH. So the luteinizing hormone or interstitial cell stimulating hormone stimulate the interstitial cells. You know what they do. They secrete testosterone. With the help of testosterone then, spermatogenesis is stimulated. The follicle stimulating hormone actually stimulates the Sertoli cells to produce the antigen binding protein. And that protein can bind to testosterone such that testosterone concentrations will remain high in the environment of the testes. And of course, that will lead to even more spermatogenesis. Now, just as so often is the case with hormones, when testosterone levels reach a certain level, we're going to see that the testosterone levels will actually feed back to the anterior pituitary and hypothalamus and inhibit them. We also see the secretion of inhibin, which we also see mentioned in the female's reproductive system, which is going to also help with uh, prevent the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone and the uh, gonadotropins LH and FSH. Inhibin, by the way, is also released by the Sertoli cells. So let's take a look at a figure to better understand this. 
as a boy reaches puberty, his hypothalamus is going to start cranking out higher levels of gonadotropin-releasing hormone. These are the axons that, or I should say the neurons with the axons that produce the gonadotropin-releasing hormone. And by the way, your book made a mistake here. They flip-flopped these letters. This should be RH for releasing hormone. Remember that these releasing hormones are dumped into this hypophysial portal system. So via the bloodstream, uh, the releasing hormone makes it to the specific cells in the pituitary that will then trigger, be triggered to release FSH as well as LH. LH will trigger the interstitial cells, also called the lytic cells, to release testosterone. Again, this is why the synonym for luteinizing hormone in the male is also called interstitial cell stimulating hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone, on the other hand, is going to impact the Sertoli cells. And Sertoli cells produce the androgen binding protein, or ABP, which then binds to testosterone and literally causes testosterone to build up, which then, of course, promotes more spermatogenesis. But as testosterone levels begin to rise, we're going to see that these rising levels will have, will kick into a negative feedback mechanism so that now everything is going to slow down. We also see that the Sertoli cells will be able to release inhibin, which also has a negative effect on particularly the anterior pituitary. So the two regula regulatory hormones are going to be inhibin and high levels of testosterone.